This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. It's obvious that the La Nina weather pattern has yet to arrive. It should bring warm and dry conditions rather than the cool and wet weather we're experiencing. Today we'll discuss the weather's impact on weed development with Tom Peters, NDSU and University of Minnesota Extension sugar beet agronomist. Tom, what observations have you made about weed control so far this year? So Bruce, in general, weed control has been very good. Early on, I think about kochia and common ragweed. Now we've had more flushes of those weeds because it's been cooler out. As far as water hemp control is concerned, our pre's perform very well, so water hemp control has been very good. Well, what about water hemp? How does water hemp control compare to last year? I would argue that 2024 has been a lot better water hemp control than 2023. So let's compare the years. So in 2023, we planted later than normal, and it was dry after planting. The water hemp was germinating at the same time as our sugar beets were germinating and emerging, plus we weren't getting the rain to activate the pre-herbicides. So compare that to 2024. We've planted earlier, and just about everybody has received rain almost immediately after planting. So we're getting our herbicides into the soil where they need to be for water hemp control. Tom, how does our rainy weather pattern affect the longevity of water hemp herbicides? Well, one way you might look at weed management is comparing the products from a a water solubility standpoint which aligns with length of control and overlaying the environment or the field season on top of that. In a year where it's drier, growers often desire products that are easier to activate in the soil, more water soluble. The trade-off is those products don't usually last as long. In 2024, we've had more rainfall we're looking at products that maybe have a longer length of control profile, but those same products probably are less water soluble. But again, with all the rain we've had, Bruce, it it hasn't really made a difference at all. Tom, what about weed escapes, especially water hemp? Yeah, we're acting like we don't have any weeds. There are some places where we do have water hemp control escape challenges. So I would suggest three different ideas. The first one is to use Ultra Blazer. Remember, our sugar beets have to be at the six leaf stage and we would prefer to have water hemp less than two inches tall. Number two, use your inner row cultivator. And in 2024, especially with some of our compacted waterlogged soils, that's a good strategy anyway. And number three, If the water hemp does extend over the canopy, use the weed zapper. The most beneficial feature of the zapper, Bruce, is that it hurts the viability of seed. So there's less seed and it's less viable, so you'll have less seed rain that'll affect crops in the future years. Thanks, Tom. Our guest has been Tom Peters, NDSU and University of Minnesota Extension sugar beet agronomist. This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.